Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hi everyone, welcome to the new module. In this module, we will cover more about the functioning and management of banks. More specifically in this session, we will focus on the features of bank balance sheet. So while going through bank balance sheet, uh, we understand how does a bank function. Okay, right. So, just about how do, importantly we will be covering how do banks function and what are the attempt, how do they attempt to maximize their profits. So, one of the point I would like to highlight here, although the discussion that follows focuses primarily on commercial banks, however, many of the same principles it applies to other financial intermediaries as well. So first of all, what is a bank? So bank uh, is a financial intermediary and it accepts deposits, that is one. Then using that proceeds is lent to the needy including firms, government and consumers. right? And it is a profit maximizing entity as well like any other firm. Bank is also a firm it tries to maximize its profit. So, while doing that, uh, a bank's engage in an important function is called asset transformation. So, about asset transformation means it is a process of selling liabilities with a one set of characteristics that is including a particular combination of liquidity, risk, its size and return and using that proceeds to buy assets with a different set of characteristics. If I give you an example, suppose selling liabilities that means uh, accepting deposits. So look at a savings bank account deposit that almost all of you are having with a bank. So what is the nature of deposit? And you know that look at the particular combination which I just now I mentioned here that means the liquidity of bank deposit that means it is a liquid asset for you though it is a liability for the bank it is a asset for you and you know that is highly liquid and about the risk actually as come from your perspective the risk is very less and the size most probably the size is small and the return that you are getting is also small. Now let us see using these proceeds that means using these deposits what a bank will do. Bank will be one example I can give you it will be giving a loan. It will be giving a loan to a firm or to a government or to a consumers. Then at that time uh, the characteristics of the same money maybe the same fund is now became another uh, security that means it became an asset that means a loan given to different people different uh, entity. So how does it look like now the liquidity of loan as compared to a bank deposit a bank loan is least liquid for a bank. Suppose you got a loan from a bank and bank cannot immediately ask you just pay it back right. So in that way a loan the same fund but it became a loan now it became less liquid and again the risk of bank loan you know the default risk is normally very high as compared to deposit the risk has increased and about the size normally maybe your deposit it may be for 1000, 10,000 or maximum 1 lakh maybe perhaps but a loan maybe you know that is in big huge in size particularly when they are paying to firms and government and it, it will be in uh, lakhs and millions right. So that means what the bank is doing here is that they engage in the process of asset transformation here. So that means using this process to buy assets with 
different set of characteristics. This is one of the important function of a bank. So, in this process, bank actually engage in an activity of called borrowing short and lending long. That means borrowing short means the deposit most you know the maximum the expiry date the a time deposit it may be for one year but banks lend it for long term that is for 5 years 10 years like that. So overall to summarize here so we can see that a basic bank a bank means it does mainly two groups of tasks one is uh, transforming assets that we just now we discussed and the second one is a providing a set of services including check clearing, record keeping, credit analysis and so forth. So, in this way you can see that a bank is also like any other production process the way they engage in a firm. However, we need to remember that unlike other firm a bank is uh, considerably different from how uh, a other, uh, other firms work that we will cover in today's session, this session and the subsequent session we will be covering how a bank is different from other firms. So now uh, in order to understand a bank, what a bank does, uh, what we do that we will go through the balance sheet of a bank. So in the balance sheet I am sure you are familiar with the term we normally use liabilities and assets. right? When it comes to bank, uh, how we equate that the total assets of a bank is equal to total liabilities plus, plus bank capital. So, uh, coming to the liabilities, liabilities means the sources of funds for the banks and assets, assets means the uses of these funds. So, look at this balance sheet of all commercial banks in the US. So, I am sure that this will give you a fair idea how does a bank balance sheet look like. So, look at this on the left hand side you can see reserves, securities, loans etc. And on the right hand side you can see uh, checkable deposits, non transaction deposits, borrowing and bank capital. So, this is an overview of the bank balance sheet. So, what we will do in the subsequently now we will discuss one by one. In that way by discussing each of these we also get to know what a bank does. Okay. So, let us start with the liability side. So, in the liability side you have seen that the checkable deposits, uh, non-transaction deposits, borrowings and bank capital. So, let us do go through one by one. In the case of checkable deposits, so it is one of the important liabilities for a bank. So, in the checkable deposits and as the name is actually payable on demand and why is called checkable deposits because um, checkable deposits include all accounts on which checks can be drawn and allow the owner of the account to write checks to third parties. So, this is important that is about the checkable deposits and you know it is a liability for the bank because you know that depositor is uh, entitled to get this money from the bank from bank perspective it is a liability. So, in this case you know that depositors can uh, withdraw funds and bank is obligated to pay. So, this checkable deposits is also called as demand deposits because the depositors can withdraw this money at, a, at their demand at any time okay. and it is an asset for the deposit just we mentioned that is a part of his or her wealth. And you know uh, checkable deposits are one of the lowest cost source of bank funds. You know why? Because depositors are willing to forego some interest in exchange for access to a liquid asset. Plus they also get bank services, they can keep their money with the bank and they get the banking services and they get ease, uh, ease of uh, easily access to a liquid asset. So, because of that reasons uh, banks that uh, depositors are also willing to forego some interest. And what are the costs of maintaining a checkable deposits? So, you know that one is actually the uh, interest payments uh, that actually all of us will be getting some interest when we have some checkable deposits. And the second one is 
incurred in servicing these accounts that means uh, processing uh, preparing and sending out monthly statements and providing efficient tellers be it human or be it the atm automatic teller machines so maintaining an impressive buildings and conveniently located branches and advertising and marketing aimed at enticing uh, customers to deposit their funds in the bank so these are all the costs involved included uh, in servicing these accounts okay so these are the two important components of the cost so let's now move to the second component is called non transaction deposits so non transaction deposit means uh, owners cannot write checks on non transaction deposits and here uh, normally for a non transaction deposit there is a time is there for the uh, withdrawal is also called as uh, time deposit so because of that the higher interest rates are paid on these deposits and because of that there is a time constraint is that that may be for one year like that so you can withdraw this money only after one year so because of that uh, these are also less liquid than checkable deposits and you know that um, when you commit your money in the bank for a fixed period of time so the bank can utilize this money to pay deposits to the needy people to the borrowers right so they because of that a bank also can uh, efficiently use this money because you are not going to withdraw this money at any time and because of that uh, they get high interest income and because of that you also get a uh, relatively high interest rate than the checkable deposits so this is one of the primary sources of bank funds and there are mainly two basic types one is savings bank account and another one is the time deposits accounts and coming to the savings account you need to remember in india uh, savings bank account is also called as demand deposit it's not it shouldn't be considered as a non transaction deposit instead is a transaction deposit or it should be considered as a checkable deposit so all of you are all of you are having savings bank account so you know that is highly uh, transact uh, it's highly transaction high, highly transactionable and is a checkable deposit you also allow to write a check uh, when you are having savings bank account and because of that is called as uh, demand deposits as well so in that way uh, when we are talking about indian contents i should be putting the savings bank account in the first category that is the trans checkable deposits and coming to the second one that is called time deposits is also called uh, certificates of deposits this uh, non transaction deposit um, as i mentioned that there is also called as time deposit it has time deposits have a fixed maturity of length so this non transaction deposits uh, time deposits we can categorize it into two one is called a uh, small denomination time deposits so this is normally deposits of less than 1 lakh and these are uh, less liquid for the depositors than passbook savings and earn higher interest rates and are more costly sources of funds for the banks then coming to the second one is called a large denomination time deposits uh, these are available in denominations of uh, more than 1 lakh or more and this large denomination cds are negotiable as well is also called as ncds is just like bonds they can be resold in the secondary market before they mature otherwise the time deposit that we are all having in with the indian banks uh, the, they are actually not negotiable non negotiable in fact uh, because the deposit that the time deposit that we keep in our indian banking uh, mostly A small denomination time deposit. These are not negotiable, not tradable in the market. But however, these large denomination CDs are negotiable. They are called uh, negotiable certificates of deposits. Okay. So these uh, NCDs are typically bought by corporations or other banks, big large banks. So NCDs are held by corporations, money market mutual funds. and other fin financial institutions 
as alternative assets to treasury bills and other short term funds now let's now move to the third category is the borrowings so this is another important source of bank funds over time so well, where all a uh, bank borrows and it mainly borrows from three sources one is uh, from the federal reserve system that means in indian case is the reserve bank of india and they we borrow the banks borrow from the central bank at a discount rate we called as discount loans and the second sources of borrowing for the bank is from other banks as is mostly short term borrowing in order to meet the liquidity and reserve requirements uh, banks borrow from each other so these are overnight uh borrowing that the overnight loans uh in the fed fund market that means interbank uh loans and these are mostly unsecured loans so the examples for this is to include that the uh, borrowing from fed fund market mumbai interbank market uh libor etc and the third source is called from corporations uh is mostly from their parent companies and you know uh, many banks they are having their parents companies uh, and they the bank holding companies they borrow from there and they also have a uh, loan arrangement with corporations such as repurchase agreements and borrowing of euro dollars that is a deposit denominated in us uh, dollar residing in foreign banks or foreign branches of us banks so coming to the borrowing uh, one of the component that bank borrow using the instrument called repurchase agreement we shortly we call it as repo uh, repo means a a short term collateralized loan in which a security is exchanged for cash so look at the figure here um, so from this i think you will get a clear understanding how does a repo agreement works so we are actually looking for two days for this transaction so look at for example day 1 day 1 so in the day 1 what happened that a bank bank who is borrowing bank sells us treasury bill to pension fund in exchange for cash right so you can see that bank uh, selling uh, to us treasury bill to the pension fund so in return on the same day uh bank will be getting money from pension fund actually the bank is borrowing from this pension fund and by selling the treasury bill to the uh pension fund in day 2 what they do that they make a repurchase that means what the bank will do bank repurchases in day 2 uh bank repurchases us treasury bill from the pension fund in exchange for the cash plus interest rate okay so that will happen on the second day so return to the bank so in re- return bank will be giving the principal plus the interest paid to the pension fund so this is how a repo agreement works now let's move to the last component of the bank's balance sheet uh, you can see that is the bank capital bank capital it includes uh, equity capital and plus retained earnings actually though we put it in the liability side actually is not really a liability as such however you know that these are actually equity capital that is raised from the equity holder and it also uh, the retained earning the undistributed dividends with the banks that also become part of the bank capital so in that way we can also interpret it as liabilities but as i mentioned is not necessary a liability as such so you can see that i just expanded this one you can see that uh, liabilities for bank capital so a uh, bank capital that is equal to the total assets minus liabilities so bank capital is raised by selling equity stocks and from retained earnings so later on uh, we'll see that a bank capital uh, is its cushion against a drop in the value of its assets which could force the bank into insolvency suppose uh, when a bank has liabilities greater than assets maybe if there is a sudden outflow of deposits 
So at that time, we will see that in the subsequent discussion that a bank capital is going to work as a cushion or as an insurance against uh, sudden outflow of deposits. So, so far we covered the um, liability side, so, so let us now move to the uh, asset sides. So, the asset side let us again go one by one, the first one this is called reserves. So, reserves means actually reserves include reserves plus cash in vault. So, what the reserves means actually there are reserves with the Fed that the central bank this is called required reserve plus cash that is physically held by banks or in their uh, shelf that is in their vault uh, held by the bank that means it is also called vault cash because it is stored in bank vaults overnight. And you know banks hold reserves for two reasons, one is for the required reserves because these are held because the reserve requirement, the required reserve requirements the regulation that for every dollar of checkable and time deposits at a bank a certain fraction see for example 10 percentage for example must be kept as a resource so this fraction is called cash reserve ratio the required cash reserve ratio so in india is approximately 4 percentage at present it varies you know during monetary policy announcement they will be changing slightly and so just come to this main point that means uh, one of the important component is the required reserve that is called the cash reserve ratio that means a certain fraction of the total deposit demand and time liabilities the banks are obliged or mandated legally required to keep a certain fraction uh, with the central bank that is called required reserve ratio. So, in the US you can see that is not equal for all banks for the small banks for example, having more than 16 million to uh, 122.3 million they are required to keep only 3 percentage of their total demand and li time liabilities and if the bank is having more than this they are mandated to keep. Uh, 10 percentage of their total demand and time deposits. And apart from um, reserves, uh, banks also keep excess reserves. That means any money because you know that all the banks they all have accounts with the central bank with the Fed. So, that means what is the additional money additional reserve uh, in addition to this in excess of the required reserve for example the 10 percent if in excess to that whatever is uh, keeping with the central bank uh, that we are going to call it as excess reserve. So, these are additional reserves because they are the most liquid of all bank assets and a bank can use them to meet its obligations when funds are withdrawn either directly by a depositor or indirectly when a check is written on an account. So, moving to other components of assets, this includes securities. Securities means mainly government securities. So, it is also called a secondary resource and these are an important income earning assets. And you know that most banks and one of their important component of their asset is their investment in securities, government securities. In the US, uh, there are three categories of securities, the US government and agency securities, these are most liquid and easily traded and converted into cash with the low transaction cost. And then coming to state and local government securities and also called as uh, municipal securities, municipal bonds. Then coming to other securities issued by large corporations, when they raise their fund through instrument that borrowing from the market they issue uh, bonds. So, these are other types of securities for uh, a bank, the, where the bank will be making investment. So, Securities shortly this is an important debt instruments for commercial banks because banks are not allowed to hold stock. So, in addition to that in India uh, we also the Indian banks the scheduled bank they are also obliged to keep uh, statutory liquidity 
keep a statutory liquidity ratio that means every bank is required to maintain at the close of business day a minimum proportion of their net demand and liabilities as liquid assets in the form of cash gold and approved securities so again that means this is in addition to in india in addition to the uh, cash reserve ratio uh, banks are mandated to keep a certain fraction uh, of their total deposits in uh, most liquid assets that including cash gold and approved government securities and you know that an increase in slr also restricts the bank's leverage position to pump more money into the economy so these are about the reserve part so let's now move to the third component this is called cash items in process of collection so we can explain this concept this component by using an example suppose that a check written on an account with another bank is deposited in your bank suppose you are holding an account with the sbi and uh, you got a check issued by a person having account with the hdfc bank for example so in this case what is going to happen so the funds for this check have not had been received collected from the other bank so when the moment uh, when you get this check uh, what you will do you will be depositing uh, this check in your bank the new york branch then your bank means uh, your sbi and then what is happen here is that this check though you deposited this check but immediately the moment you check uh, deposit this money in your branch in your bank uh, immediately uh, this much amount will be credited in your account though it will be written that subject to realization of credit so what is going to happen so at that time uh, this check though is in your um, return as in your account however this actually cash item in process of collection so it's an asset for your bank because it's a claim on another bank for funds that will be paid within few days next item that the, is called deposit with the other banks that means bank also keep deposit with the many other banks many small banks many small banks actually hold deposit with the larger banks uh, in exchange for a variety of services including check collection atm facilities foreign exchange transaction and help with the securities purchase so this is one aspect of a system called correspondent banking as well so collectively what we will do that cash item in process of collection and deposit other banks are referred to as cash items so this is the fourth component and the remaining uh, we will cover in the next session the um, uh, two more component is remaining that is called loans and other assets with this one we will cover in the next session thank you